on exotic holidays. Camping and caravanning were the easiest way to get away from it all. Even a short break was an opportunity to have fun. A few days by the sea is a thing tackled by different people in different ways. To some, it is a panic-stricken rush to the railway station with bulging suitcases. To others, it is a car crammed with buckets, spades and fretful children. But to many, a modern young couple, the trip seems to be simplicity itself. In a matter of moments, the trailer and dinghy are in position and the family transport is all ready to go. And in case you're wondering why a dinghy needs a streamlined trailer, we should explain that it's really a collapsible caravan, believe it or not. The caravan built at Emsworth, Hampshire is not complicated. Even a moron, mechanically speaking, can fix it up in a matter of minutes. And it provides comfortable accommodation for two adults and a child. Four retractable legs provide a firm base for the caravan and prevent it from rolling inadvertently out to sea in the middle of the night. Although we dare say it would make a fine houseboat too. For those who can't get away to the seaside for a holiday, you can always spend odd days or weekends camping by some local river or lake. The latest fashion in camping today is a bed that fits on top of your car. Apart from holidaymakers, this type of mobile camp is a boon to travellers who can't find a hotel for the night. Invented by Victor Rosen, who got the idea from a covered wagon seen during a recent visit to the United States, the rooftop camp is particularly handy for women who are scared of insects and crawly things that usually invade an ordinary tent. The roof camp, which took the inventor three months to develop from the idea stage, is up and ready for sleeping within a few minutes. And if you suffer from claustrophobia, that's just too bad. You should have thought of that before. Leaving the other stick in the mud stuck to the caravan site, we're all set for a day on the River Lee at Broxbourne. No need to drive right into the river. The otter can be launched quite simply from the side of the bank. All you need are two sets of muscles. So without the usual ceremony, Alan and his friend Ron Sams, who built the amphibian, prepare for the launching. If you're contemplating regular river holidays in this fashion, a bottle of champagne each time can be expensive, so Alan and Ron get used to launching her without the usual trimmings. On board, a few final touches make her seaworthy, or rather river-worthy, for despite her unsinkable appearance, the otter isn't cut out for ocean crossing. But if you want to relax, this is the way to do it. <laughs> 